What's going on, everybody? Chip Walton here at Northern Brewer HQ. I was recording uh, an interview with the folks at Root Shoot Malting. Among them, Mike Myers, head malster, who you see here in the square that way or this way. And we talked a lot about the awards. They are currently the most awarded malt house in the world. Uh, they've won eight medals in four to five years here at the Malt Cup. And it really got me thinking, like, I know a lot about judging beers. Judged a lot of beers. Score sheets and the adding of things and the scoring of things, but I didn't know that there was really that big of a competition for malt. So I wanted to ask Mike, Mike, kind of walk us through the the competition, um, how you decide what to submit, and then you kind of made it sound like it's a very um, a tiered judging uh, to some extent. I'm saying that wrong, but there's rounds of judging essentially. Yep. So. Um... How it works is this craft malt um, cup is open to any craft maltster in the world to participate in. Um, how it works is you send in samples um, and it goes through three different judging phases. So the very first is they run it through labs at Hartwick or Montana State University. And they're trying to determine if your malt is functional malt because the whole idea of the malt cup is to be awarding uh, people that are making very functional functional malt for the brew houses and distilleries. So if you can't hit any of the parameters or, um, you know, classifications of style profiles, um, you're immediately removed. So if your beta glucans come outside of a range, you're immediately removed. If your color, uh, just as an example, they have Munich 10 as a color or as a malt, pro as a malt profile, if you hit outside of 9 to 11, you're immediately removed from that category because what they want is to they want to recognize folks for making very two style um, classic malts and then put them into a category that's like, yes, this is this is functional malt for brewers and distillers. So there's three steps. The first would be the analytical portion. Um, and then it moves on to uh, basically sensory. And what they do is they package up um, sensory packets and they send it to all the different participating breweries. Uh, New Belgium is a participant, Sierra Nevada, Allagash. So any of Bell's, uh, Colorado State University. Uh, there are a bunch of people that are involved in this judging process and it's actually super complex. So they mail out all these samples to these uh, people that are judging them. And what they do is they make uh, hot steeps from them. And that's done with the American Society of Brewing Chemists um, hot steep method that they've come up with for evaluating malts. Um, and then they do the judging. So if they have Munich 10, they're going to judge all these Munich 10s against each other and move the top few forward that hit the flavor profiles or, you know, that the style profiles. So what happens is they get all the feedback, all the winners then advance into the final round where they're doing sensory analysis on all of the uh, winners from each of those locations. And so they whittle it down to first, second, and third for every style um, and just try to uh, pick very style appropriate or the, the best of the styles uh, is awarded those medals, which is pretty cool. Tell me a little bit about your internal QC and decision process uh, for what you even submit. All right. So we have, I'm, I mean, brewing and malting has been around for, I mean, they're they're together uh, for e an eon, right? So we're always trying to produce very uh, style appropriate. So if we're trying to make a pilsner, we want it to have, you know, the grass, the hay. Uh, you don't want a lot of color. We're trying to hit those, you know, storied styles that have been around forever. So what we do is we do a lot of, a part of our QC here is when a batch comes out, we're evaluating it on the friability, the color, the clarity, the hot steep. Um, and we're just measuring all these things before it goes to our packaging side. And then we also send everything out for uh, lab results. So that way we can make sure that we're staying in range and that we're being consistent with our processes in the malt house to produce very consistent malt on the back end. And as we mentioned, you've won a handful of these awards. How does that feel for you? 
Todd Allander, the fifth generation uh, owner founder, um, what's kind of that pride factor for you guys? Yeah, so the uh, very first year they held this competition, um, we were awarded the only medal, uh, you know, so as a startup malt house that, uh, well, a farm that took a gamble to build a malt house um, that felt like they had 50 years worth of barley growing experience that they could translate this into a malting company. Uh, you know, the satisfaction of being recognized as producing the world's best pale malt uh, is just mind blowing. Right. And so fast forward, they have this competition a second year. We medal in a different flavor profile. I think it was uh, English. I think it was English Pale the second year where we medal in that. And then they have it another year and we medal again and they have it another year and we medal again. And last year they had four categories and we won first for Pilsner, uh, first for Vienna, first for Munich 10 uh, and second, or I think it's second place for Pil or not Pilsner, Pale. So like they host four categories and we almost sweep the entire competition. <laughs> Um, so the, the thing about what we're doing here at the mall house is we're making, we're not just making, hanging our hat on Jeannie Pale as being amazing. Like everything that you're getting from our operation has a lot of thought process put into it. A lot of, you know, sensory going into it, a lot of feedback from brewers and distilleries to help make our products the best that we can. Um, you know, so being recognized on that scale is pretty amazing, um, uh, you know, we talk about like consistency and that's the measurement of success is cons consistency. So we're, we've been able to, you know, carry on no matter what the crop year does or what, what our raw materials do is we're able to still make really high quality products coming out of this malt house. I also should mention that the hot steep method that Mike talked about is something that we demonstrate in the Northern Brewer University class, our ingredient series on malt, that was really fun. I had never done that where you flour, essentially, you turn the malt to flour, you steep it. So go check out that class. I'll link the class and obviously our root shoot malting collection of, of barley and other grains at Northern Brewer in the video description below. Mike, thanks for the little bonus video, brother. Yeah, man. Everybody put this in your mash gun. Do it. Do it! <laughs>